there's an evil entity in the house. You are about to see real people. I was terrified beyond belief. Reliving horrifying paranormal encounters for the first time. I was so freaked out. As they confront spirits that just won't leave. I couldn't have moved if I tried. I was so scared. I buried this for nearly 30 years. Be prepared to be afraid. Born and raised in Schenectady, New York. Lived there for 19 years of my life. Well, I grew up with my uh, with my mom and dad, and uh, about four years later, my uh, younger brother Jeremy came into the picture. Jeremy and I were were the typical brothers. Like any brothers, we always had our scuffles, of course. <laughs> It was the, the normal thing for us. But uh, otherwise, we got along well. Like, we always we always liked the same things. Uh, we were both big into video games. My childhood, I would describe it as, uh, at the time, I would have described it as normal. And then I learned that it was anything but normal. I mean, we lived in a one-floor house, uh, had an attic, a basement. It was uh, approximately 70 years old. With the hallway, I mean, it always gave off really dark and, like, creepy vibes to us. Like, if you, if you like, looked down the hallway at night when it was dark, you would just get this, like, really eerie feeling, like something's looking at you almost, you know? The first odd thing I can recall um, it was actually a few things that kept happening throughout the entire time that we lived there. There'd be uh, footsteps up in the attic. Like, uh, sometimes it sounded like, sounded like it would come from down the hall, like there'd be like a thing, like something walking down the hall, and then you'd hear it like run up into the attic and run across the house. They were smaller footsteps. It, it did not sound like a grown-up at all. It sounded more like a child rather than an adult. And all of a sudden, I would just hear like a doot, 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 like in the back of the house. There was uh, uh, one day that I was homesick from, from school, and it was just my mother and I. heard uh, sounded like about four or five footsteps literally right above us. Hello? There's somebody here? My mother and I just looked at each other. We were a little freaked out. So we walked over to the attic and we, or my mother opened up the attic door and yelled up to the attic saying, if somebody's up here, you better come down here now or I'm calling the police. I saw a man had this stare of like, hey, what, what are you doing up here? Get out of here. I never, I didn't tell my mother. I couldn't. 
already terrified after his encounter in the attic, John Griffin would soon find out that nowhere in his home was safe. There was an incident not in our bedroom one night. He used to always throw blankets over our mirror, over the mirror, because I used to always see like shadow figures walking around in our room, and I just didn't want to see it. There was just something about the mirror that was creeping me out, so I kept on throwing a blanket over it. The cats kept on knocking the blankets down, which would frustrate me. I saw this man looking at me through the mirror. He just gave you that vibe when you looked into uh, looked into his eyes that he didn't like you. You didn't know why, but he just didn't like you. And he kept on giving you the look of, I just want you to go away. And then he disappeared right in front of me. I just remember thinking to, to myself, I, I can't do this anymore. Children seem to experience more paranormal phenomena and psychic activity because they haven't really been conditioned or groomed environmentally or socially. Um, they're a lot more open-minded to those types of experiences. There's also people that are just more uh, sensitive or in tune to these types of things. I remember hearing uh, what sounded like a little girl's voice. John Griffin, feeling threatened by a menacing spirit in his family's new home, had now encountered a second ghost. She seemed frightened and upset, and she was trying to kind of remain as, remain as quiet as possible. Help me. And then she was just gone. Soon after, John found that his younger brother Jeremy was also seeing things he couldn't explain. I was sleeping on the, the love seat that was right next to my parents' door. six feet tall. It's wearing like uh, a camouflage outfit, a uh, camouflage hat, like, you know, like hunter camo, uh, wielding a shotgun. And its face is just pure white eyes. I remember waking up that morning and Jeremy was very quick to pull me aside and say, I saw him last night. Uh, we wanted to go and confront the hunter himself. We had had enough of it and we were gonna tell him to leave us alone.
told him that we're tired of him and that he is to stop bothering us. That didn't go over too well with him. Jeremy and I were just starting to come to the realization that we were just going to suffer with this until we move out. Fortunately, a few months later, the boy's father got a new job in a different town, and they were able to move. It wasn't until only a few years ago, actually, um, long after I'd moved out of the house, uh, that I started like kind of piecing the things together in my mind. Like, you know, I was thinking back, like, OK, so we got uh, a hunter with a gun, uh, you got a little girl down the hallway saying, help me, um, that, you know, was running up into the attic. And so, like, I thought of these things, and I was like, okay, so these things actually kind of do seem to fit together a little bit. It makes me wonder, was he terrorizing a little girl? I think it started to put a, a, a clearer picture uh, together as to uh, what was really going on in the house. Once we left, I was done with it. I just wanted to move on. The experience changed John's life forever. He now works as a psychic medium, helping other people rid their homes of unwanted spirits. Anybody who comes to me with experiences or wants my opinion on anything, if there are no facts to back it up, I'll listen to what they have to say, and then I look at the, uh, the other side of it. I always stand in the middle because everybody deserves to be heard. Some ghosts stick to a particular place to relive past crimes again and again. Others are happy to rest in peace until someone living does something to offend them. My wife and I were, were looking to move and we wanted to buy an old century type home. And we found this beautiful old house in Aurora, built in 1915. The three families had moved in and out of the house within a year and a half. And I thought, oh, well, something's wrong. Something's got to be wrong with the house. So we had a building inspector, naturally, and he told us that everything appears fine. So based on his investigation, we went ahead and bought the house. For Bob, his wife Donna, and their baby daughter Ellie, it felt like a dream come true. This house was really, really nice. You know, the banister was like hand carved and everything just appeared to, to be exactly what we were looking for. Three weeks after moving in, Bob made an unusual discovery. In the backyard when I was cutting the lawn, there was a rectangular shoebox size depression in the lawn. It was very precise, and it was about two inches deep. And I thought, wow, something looks like it's been buried here. My curiosity got the better of me, and I started to dig it up.
Bob Mowers had discovered an unusual depression in the lawn at his new home and decided to investigate. And I found nothing. And I thought, something was buried here probably many years ago. And whatever it is has long since decayed, and there's nothing left. I, I went out and bought a tree, and I planted a tree there. So I didn't get my, my lawnmower stuck in this thing anymore. I was really happy about that. I knew the house was fine and structurally sound, and there were no major problems. But I was still concerned uh, about why people are moving in and out of there so quickly. So day after we moved in, I thought, well, I guess I'll start going through boxes and seeing what we have. somebody breathing on my neck on the left side. There was someone there. I was sure of it. I could actually feel them breathing. It scared me quite a bit no idea what it was, what would cause that. I thought, well, maybe it's wind or something's blowing. I always tried to put it down to something else. Bob's encounter in the attic turned out to be just the beginning. On the main floor was where the washroom was. Somebody in the hall behind me, outside the bathroom, walk by. And I go, who is that? There's nobody here. It was a black figure. It was just a black figure. And it was fairly quick. So it was just like that. Right? So you know you saw something, but you, you didn't see it long enough to be able to focus on it. So I kind of shrugged that off too, thinking, oh, well, that's who knows what that is. I thought maybe it's a reflection. was starting to get an idea of why the house had seen three previous occupants in the last two years. When the weekend came, I always liked to have a fire, and it had a real wood fireplace in the family room. So Friday night, I would get home, we'd have dinner, start the fire. I would usually be the last one up. My wife would go to bed. And when it was almost out, I would, I would close the flue. And then I would close the screen. Then I would go to bed. One morning, I got up and I came down. I was the first one to come downstairs. And all the ashes from the fireplace were piled in a big, neat pile in front of the fireplace.
It was like a pyramid shape. Couldn't figure out how it could possibly get formed like that, because if you blow on it gently, the whole thing's going to come down. How could anyone possibly form ashes to sit like that? That really startled me and freaked me out. In order to get somebody's attention, sometimes spirits will actually manifest items or sculpt a certain object so that it can get the person's attention, so that therefore they can have help crossing over or just give the message that they're present in the household. I was in the kitchen washing dishes by myself in the house. Nobody else was there. I heard coming from the basement right below me four elderly female voices having a tea party. And I thought, this is one of these times where you really think you're losing your mind. And I did. I thought, OK, I got to be going nuts. This can't be real. I was trying to listen to what they said, but I couldn't make out what they were saying. It was like, it was all gibberish. But there were definitely four elderly female voices. And I heard all the sounds clearly. I heard when they could put their cup on the saucer. I heard when they stirred their cup. All the sounds were there. OK, this is one of these times where I, I definitely think I'm losing my mind, because this, what I'm hearing, cannot really be happening. Walk downstairs. Nothing. Perfectly quiet. Nothing was out of the ordinary. Nobody was down there. And I, I couldn't believe what I'd heard. his family into their dream home. Everything just appeared to, to be exactly what we were looking for. But he was beginning to realize why several previous occupants had moved out so quickly. A series of bizarre incidents, including disembodied voices, cold breath on his neck, and weird supernatural displays had left him confused and afraid. We had a couple over, and we were all sitting in our family room, and he excused himself to go to the washroom. And he came into the family room and said, oh, thanks a lot, guys. That was really funny. And where it's like, uh, what? What are you talking about? Oh, you know, you're pushing against the door. You know, that was really, you know, really funny. And we said, well, all of us have been in here, you know, since you guys got here. So I don't know what you're talking about. After Bob's guests left, he and his wife stayed up for a cup of coffee. I was on the phone, and I saw a lady coming up the driveway. The 
first thing I realized was she wasn't walking up the driveway. There were no steps, just like she was floating up the driveway like this. I yelled to my wife, somebody's coming to the back door. Nobody came to the door, so we both went outside. We're looking all over the yard. <clears throat> Never saw anybody. I must be going out of my mind. These, this is not normal. I'm, I'm, I'm going crazy. And I went to the Aurora Historical Society, and I said, oh, maybe somebody died in the house. And they said, unfortunately, they didn't have very good records in those days, and know that they weren't really able to tell me uh, if anybody passed away in that house. But they were kind enough to give me a list of everybody that ever lived in that house. One day when I was uh, out in the front yard and I was cutting the lawn and a car pulled up and a lady got out and she told me her name and she said, I used to live here and my husband and I moved out some 10 years ago. Um, I said, would you like to come in and have a look around? And she said, oh, that'd be great, thanks. So I took her in the house and just before she left, we were in the front foyer, just inside the front door. And I said to her, before you leave, there's one question I would like to ask you. And she said to me, you're going to ask me if it's haunted. She said, did you ever hear about the old lady with the cats? And she said, well, there was a lady that lived here. Um, her name was Miss Glover. She lived here by herself. She never married, but she loved cats. And during the course of her living there, that she had buried some of her cats in the yard. And she left a note, actually, for whoever the next owners were coming in to please not disturb certain areas in the backyard where she had buried her cats. The first thing I thought of was, holy smokes, that thing that I ran over with my lawnmower, where I used to get the lawnmower stock all the time, that was rectangular shoebox size with a depression in the grass about two inches. That must have been where she buried one of her cats. Now I got her upset with me. If a spirit feels that it has been disrespected or not honored properly, the spirit is known to actually come back and begin haunting the household. And when it came to showing how upset she was, the late Miss Glover was only getting started. My wife was out, and I was home by myself with my daughter, and I was up in her bedroom rocking her to sleep. And everything was very quiet, and I had my daughter over my shoulder, like this. And I was in the rocking chair, just rocking her to sleep. And, you know, kind of like singing a lullaby or something. After disturbing a cat burial spot in his yard, Bob Mowers had incurred the wrath of the cat's owner. The only problem? She had been dead for years. The whole room was shaking. And I, again, thought, I'm, I got to be losing my mind. This can't really be happening. I was so freaked out, and I didn't know what to do. 
but I saw it and I still remember it clearly, very vividly in my mind, clear as a bell. I'll never forget watching this happen. For Bob, it was one incident too far and he decided to put the house on the market. The people that bought our house had it exercised and they would go to every single room. They went to every bed bedroom, started praying and telling the spirit, you don't belong here. Go to the light, follow the light. Just when the minister and his wife were getting ready to leave, they all heard the same thing. Like she said, we all heard this loud female voice scream. And her minister said, that was her, she's gone. You'll, you won't have any, anything else. And she said, ever since then, nothing's out. Bob Mowers incurred the wrath of his home's former owner by disturbing her cat's grave. Territorial entities can stake a claim on a property for all sorts of reasons. And sometimes they need no reason at all. Take one marker. Five years ago, um, just came to a point in my life where it was time for me and my husband to separate. Uh, we both realized that it was the right thing to do. So I was looking for a place to rent. Um, I decided that I didn't want to just run out and buy something. I wanted to think it through. At the same time, my brother was also going through a divorce. So an idea for us to rent together. And we knew that we could trust each other with um, our each other's children because we were siblings. and. Um, we were there just to kind of be moral support to each other, too, through a difficult time. My main criteria was looking for a four-bedroom townhouse. I found the townhouse that it was available. I went that day and put my money down on it. When we moved in, it just didn't feel like home. It had a cold feeling and not like a temperature-wise cold feeling. It just didn't feel homey. End of September, beginning of October, I got up about four in the morning. And you could see the impression of somebody, like, like the comforter was down. And I knew I felt it, but there also was the, well, maybe it was a weird dream. was unpacking coats and putting it just straight into the entryway closet. Then when I bent down to put the shoes in, I kind of moved things around and looked up and noticed lower down on, on the wall was a big cross that had been drawn in pencil. I put some boxes in the storage area that was in the laundry room. I just kind of had noticed on the beams that there was a big wooden cross um, nailed up on the beams. I started getting a sick feeling that like something isn't right here. Whenever Regina tried to put it out of her mind, something else would happen. I was out in the garage, and it was somewhat cold out. I had a jacket on. And it felt like someone very forcefully like pulled my hair. I, I have never really experienced anything like that before. I knew I'd be moving out in the next couple months. So I just kind of wanted just to get out of there and not deal with it. But then the activity escalated. I was the only one home, and I looked down, and across the top of my foot were three lines. 
like scratches. It looks like claw marks. We had no animals that lived with us at the time. Um, I was sleeping alone. Nobody else could have scratched me accidentally. I started trying to find any plausible reason, including scratching myself. But it was perfect marking a three. I was really scared to tell anybody um, because you just, you think nobody's gonna believe you. There's several different reasons why a spirit would become violent or attack a family or a person, and one of which is that they feel very possessive or controlling of that house. Um, another time is that they might not like the people that are within the household, or it might be a more sinister entity that really has a malevolent intent towards the family and just simply wants to harm them. I got out of the shower and I went to brush my hair and I noticed it. Regina Hughes thought she was imagining things in her newly rented home. But after her hair was pulled and scratches appeared on her body, skepticism had given way to genuine fear. I got out of the shower and I went to brush my hair and I noticed it. My brother was home. I ran upstairs to show him, and he just couldn't believe it. He was like, wow, you know? So he took pictures. That was the day that it went from this weird to what, what is in our house? The attacks on Regina had been bad enough, but even worse was to come. I was making dinner upstairs, and my son was in the downstairs. Um, I was basically just sitting on my bed in my room all by myself, and I had my um, headphones in, and I was listening to music. It felt super quiet. <laughs> felt like Somebody touched me, and then like a split second after that, it just got super freezing cold just on this leg, and like the weird tingly feeling, like almost like your leg fell asleep, and but not, I don't really know how to describe it, but it was really scary. All of a sudden, I heard something drop. He came upstairs, he just, the color was gone from his face, he was completely freaked out, and he said, I'm out of here. And he went to a friend's house, and he come home till later that night, and that night, he slept in my bed. Could really tell he was scared he didn't want to be there anymore it was just weird feeling bad feelings in the house so so at this time i, I was just i'm the mom i'm the parent what am i going to do to take care of these kids and protect them because something's going on in this house in theory, spirits are able to attack people by sort of coming into our plane of existence, our reality. They're able to transcend that veil between worlds, and it takes considerable energy for them to physically attack somebody. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know what to do. So I actually drove to our church. So I, when I went into the pastor's office and told him, I said, I know you're going to think I'm crazy, but this is what's happening. And I showed him a, the couple pictures I had gotten on my cell phone. He said, I will come out and bless it once you're done. But I really don't feel safe or comfortable doing it until you have someone smudge your house. My name is Heidi Steffens, and I live in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'm actually a paranormal energy consultant. Since I was a child, I've been able to see and communicate with spirits. Most of the cases that we've worked on over the years have been entities that are not wanted in the home. When things come in three, like the scratches did, and it's in a negative form, it's usually a mocking of the Holy Trinity, and that's of great concern to me, especially when children are involved. 
I knew that it wasn't an animal that had passed. It wasn't a loved one that had passed. It was something darker. And I knew they needed help. We agreed for her to come out later that weekend. We got out there on a Sunday afternoon and met with Regina. I didn't know what to expect. And I was very relieved when I opened the door and saw um, a very lovely, <laughs> normal person. So we decided to you know, start in the upstairs and work our way through the home from room to room and then finish downstairs where we felt the energy was the strongest. And that's the first time we heard it. Like, I couldn't have moved if I tried. I was so scared. It was almost like shouting, loud talking, but you couldn't understand the words. <laughs> it just is like, it was saying something, but you just couldn't understand it. And it voice was just so freaky, just scary. It was quite able to move around and interact with the living in a very negative way. It presented itself as a female energy. And that the best way she could describe her to me was like a hag. <laughs> and so we just kept about our business, got a little bit louder, and finished it up. Went through the space, we went through it again to make sure. It felt good, it did, it felt great. I would have slept there myself that night and uh, we knew that it felt very safe when we were done with the clearing. Regina Hughes' experience shows that even when unwanted entities are removed, the trauma of encountering them can remain for many, many years. So this really opened my eyes that there is negativity. Um, I don't know if evil might be a little bit too strong of a word, but just that with the good comes the bad. There is dark things out there, and it's really scary. I, to this day, avoid driving by the road that, or driving on the road that goes by that townhouse. I don't like to think about it. It's um, something that I never want to experience again.